So I'm building a brand new app. It's an app for myself that I've been wanting to build for a long time and I'm finally pulling the trigger and actually doing it. This app is just a very simple workout application. It's going to be called Simple Lift, I'm pretty sure. And the logo is gonna be something sick like this and uh, the designs aren't final, but it'll probably look something like this. I'm still, still figuring it out. But this app, even though it's something that I'm building for myself, I think it's very important to go through a little planning process before you build any sort of anything pretty much, not just apps. But this is specifically for apps and kind of the process I go through when I'm planning on building a new application. So the main point of this is to kind of make sure we do the minimum required before we actually start building. I think a massive problem people have is they overthink things on what you should build. And I think you should veer towards just building whatever you plan on. But I do think a little bit of planning goes a long way. So this should not take more than like one or two hours on your end if you're doing it by yourself. And we're gonna run through in like what, I don't know how long, well, however long this video is. So the first part is ideation. This is where you want to figure out if this is a good idea to be pursuing at all. Or maybe it's something you just want to build like I did. I want to build a workout app. It's kind of framing it in a way where it's a better idea than just workout app because that's, that's pretty vague. So the first thing is almost anything you build should have a problem that is actually solving. So what is the one core thing that you want your application to solve? Obviously in the future, you can solve a bunch of stuff, but when you're just getting started, you should focus on just one thing. So what problem are you trying to solve with this application? For me, it's tracking progressive overload. If you don't know what progressive overload is, basically every time you go to the gym, you wanna make sure you're improving either in sets or weights or something like that, and you're, you're just getting stronger over time. Now, there are a ton of apps that do this. There's a ton of apps that do progressive overload, but I wanted something very simple, something that's like unique and just, I can do it really fast without thinking too much about it. We'll get to that part of the ideation, but the next part is the target audience. This is a very important piece to define because you want to make sure you align your marketing and your product and everything to the right pe person. For example, if I wanted to solve the tracking progressive overload problem for someone above 50, someone that's not really into working out at all, maybe I would make an app that slowly guides them through a lot of stuff. I want to make sure that they understand what progressive overload is and I want to make sure they understand like how you actually do the exercises. So ideally the target audience is someone like me that's already into lifting, but they're not crazy hardcore where they're not tracking every little thing. They just want a very simple to use app that knows that lets them know that they're improving. Now, the next thing is we want to have one key solution or one key feature for an application. Obviously a workout app can be, can turn into like hundreds and hundreds of things. Can have all sorts of little uh, bits and bobs in there that you want to add that maybe make it a little bit better, but you just want to focus on one key feature. Make sure you get this, make this really good and make it nice. It's also referred to as like MVP, so minimum viable product. It's aligned with that sort of philosophy, but I think when you, people talk about MVP, like the minimum viable product, they're just trying to get something out there like fast. In my opinion, it should be like one feature or one solution, but it should be very well built and it should be kind of joyful for the people that use it. So the one key solution that I'm trying to make is to show you that you are improving, show that you did something better or lifted more or had more sets than the last time you were at the gym. Now, being honest, there's probably something already that solves this problem for people. Unless you just kind of big brain something where no, no one's ever done it before, most likely someone's probably solved that problem before. So what makes your app special? What makes it a little bit different? How can you kind of position it differently than all the other ones? It doesn't have to be anything crazy, right? For me, it's just going to be simplicity. I feel like a lot of the other workout apps have way too many things you can do. I just want a very easy way to like track it and make like make additions and see if I did better or not than the last week. Now, the last part I kind of learned the hard way is that the, your product doesn't matter that much unless it's really something revolutionary, really something someone's never seen before. The likelihood of it just kind of popping off by itself is very unlikely. So a very key part of building something new is the marketing approach. And the way I like to think about it is like, what's the highest leverage way you can market something and like just go all in on that and push, put everything that you can into that one marketing approach. Because you can, again, think of doing like Facebook ads, you could think of doing some other ads, you could think of making content, you could think of, I don't know, going the SEO route. There's so many different ways you could go for marketing. And I think just picking your strength and going with that one is the best way to do it. So for me, I'm gonna build this app, this workout app live on Twitch. Um, there's probably a link in the description if you wanna subscribe. And I'm probably gonna be making videos like this one, sharing my journey of building this application. That's the initial ideation stage. So we kind of have a broad idea of which direction we want to go in. Now the next part is requirements. Now again, we want to get to building as fast as possible and get this product in a very quality state and get it out to people to actually use it or yourself to use it, whatever that your goal is. So the goal with these requirements is to make as minimum amount of requirements possible in order to make your one key solution, like actually have a, actually work nice. 
For example, if you need to log into something in order for your solution to work, you're probably going to need authentication as a requirement. But try to think outside the box, like what is the least minimum requirements I need in order to make this solution like work in order for it to be a very quality solution. So the way I'm thinking about it is for an app for a workout application, like yeah, logging in would be nice, right? You log in and you can sync them across, but that's not that's not the solution, that's not the problem we're trying to solve. We're just trying to solve progressive overload. So what do we need? We need to log our workouts. And that means we need to log the sets, we need to log the reps, and we need to log the weight. The next one is we need to compare the current workout to our previous workout to know whether we're improving or not. And you should be able to see the, the numbers you had in your previous workout so you can try to beat it in this current workout. And the last one is you want to be able to customize your workout because obviously I just don't want everybody doing the workouts that I choose for them. You get to put in your own workouts that you want to do and you're able to progress through them based on your own goals. So those are really kind of the three requirements. There's really nothing else that needs to happen. Like I think, right? There are things that might come up while I'm developing, but like from what I'm thinking about in the first point, as long as I accomplish these three, my app should be ready to go. So at this point, I haven't started with any UI, so I'm still kind of exploring what this app will look like. So I want to add some a few inspiration points. So the first piece of inspiration is an app that I built for our Flutter course. So this is an interactive Flutter course. So you get to actually build stuff in here, and you can in, like write the code directly in here. Then you can complete it, and we check whether you did a good job or not. And then you get the actual Flutter app that you can interact with. So uh, this UI was very simple. I just wanted to have a very simple way to kind of explain some topics related to MVVM. But you can see here, I made it where your current set is equal to your previous, as our previous was 12, 12, and 12 reps. So here, 12, it's green, 11, it's red, and 13 is green again. So I kind of want the same vibe, but in a more like user-friendly or nicer way than just uh, adding numbers in here, right? This was just a demo. Like I want to make a production app. So that was the first inspiration. And then the next one was this app called Strong. So this is something I used for a while. It's it's pretty good. I like it. Uh, I don't really have much complaints about it other than there has so many different things there. I want something that's really simple. I open up and I can see whether I'm doing better or not. So next, I'd like to think about the data that we will need here. I think a lot of your applications should be centered around what data you're using because that's going to be the, that's kind of the core of most applications. It's really like, again, we want to keep everything as minimal as possible in order to get that solution that you're going for. And the way I think about data is just kind of what are we storing in the database, right? What are the things that we're going to be using? So th the main thing is the workouts, or this will probably be an ID and a timestamp of when you finish the workout. And the next one is going to be each set. So this one will have an ID, which workout it's tied to. So the workout ID, and then reps and weight and the type of the workout. So the data is gonna be very straightforward. I do not think we need much more than that. Eventually I'll probably add authentication, right? And then we implement more and more data, but at the beginning in order to solve this problem, we just need this. Now the last part is just a very simple user flow diagram to kind of get a vision of how things are going to work. Like what screens do you need, where things are going to flow and how it's gonna, like how everything's gonna happen. So at first the user opens the app, there, I want them to go directly to the main workout page. I don't want there to be any fluff. I don't want to do any onboarding, no logging in, no nothing, just directly at your workout so you can add the new things. Then you do the workout and you make each little tick green, like that's the whole goal, so you can feel good. And then you finish and that's it. You don't have to do anything. And every time you reopen the app, you'll have the previous workouts information saved and you'll be able to compare against that information. Again, I could have made this way more complicated, right? But the goal is to keep it minimal, to make sure you're building a solution to a problem and make the solution as good as possible and make it only one solution. From there, that's all the planning you really need. There's a link to a worksheet in the description if you want to download something I set up so you can fill it out yourself. Um, but then from there, I, I go into planning the UI of my application. Now this isn't, I don't really go too crazy on making sure everything's pixel perfect. I just want to play around with it, see what it's going to look like. This doesn't look as bad as some of my earlier designs, like a few years ago that I made. Like it's it's okay, I think, but there's still a lot of things missing. Like I didn't go I didn't go hard trying to find these icons. I just used, you know, the whatever I could find, and this was just a piece of text. Like maybe the logo will get updated. Maybe the bun will follow a better style. Maybe these buns will look better. And I kind of played around with the idea of making the whole screen green, and then we kind of played around with the idea of uh, just simplifying the UI a bunch. And especially now with AI, you can go into the code and you kind of can build UIs a lot easier, I think. You can iterate on it just as fast as you would in Figma. And again, that's why I think this stuff is even more important because 
Like if you have all of these requirements straight, I think it's a lot easier to work with AI and everything and build actual quality products. So thank you for watching. Hope this was helpful. Again, there's a sheet to download in the description if you want. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably also like this video.